Welcome all, particularly Bill Mintz and Bill Chapman, who are here with us in person. And we'll begin. Thank you all. Good morning. I'm Bill Mintz. I'm the executive director of Free Wills Houston. I thought we would start with a short prayer about welcoming God. We rejoice that you watch over the strangers and lift up the lowly. Look with favor on those in our world who are most vulnerable, especially refugees, migrants, and asylum seekers. Give us hearts of compassion that they might obtain joy and gladness as we await your coming. In your great mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> um, First thing I want to do is make sure everybody understands that the free in free wheels is not free stuff. It is freedom. That's what we try to do in this ministry project. Um, a free wheel is a part on a bike. It's the part in the rear hub that lets you coast. Otherwise, your bike would be like a trike when you were a little kid, and the only way to stop that Excuse me, was, excuse me. Your yeah. voice has just started. I can hear your voice, but I can't make out the words. Come closer, Bill. You're going Come closer. To... Okay, yeah. how about that? Oh, you Perfect, can thank you. Bill. Sorry to no, interrupt. Okay. It cuts off your head, so, yeah. Okay, also. I can... Come, come. A little closer. I'll scoot that. You come closer, and I'll scoot way back. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. I will just backtrack a second. I was saying that the free in free wheels is freedom. It's not free things. It's one word. Um, a free wheel is a part on a bike that it's um, in the rear hub assembly and it's what lets you coast. It what's, it's the piece that lets you stop pedaling and keep going forward. If you remember when you had a little a trike when you were very small, the only way to stop pedaling was to take your head, your feet off the pedals. A freewheel lets you coast. And it was one of the key inventions in the development of the safety bicycle. That's enough about bicycle <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> but freedom, first time you got a bike, your world didn't end at the end of the block. Your world went on, you could go see your friends blocks away, miles away. That's what we give people. They, we, we hear from people all the time who want a bike because they're stuck in these apartments in, in Southwest Houston and, you know, Metro is, is getting better, but it's not great. And uh, they don't have the resources to get a car. And um, the English language lessons providers, the contractors are got long waiting lists. So people want to get out, explore the city. They want to go to the store, things like that. And, and that's what we provide them. People give us bikes. Somebody just offered us a bike. And then our volunteer crew comes in on Fridays and Saturdays and increasingly other days of the week and works on them. And then we give them to people. So that's, that's in the basic what, what we do at Free Wheels. We've had a couple of really good months. We've given away more than 90 bikes since the 1st of December. Um, we gave away 190 all of last year. So I wanna go back to, I wanna turn it over to Jennifer and Brent Dyer because they've been working with the family, not, not the family that is the officially sponsored Christ the King family sponsorship family, but Golshar and his family, and we gave them a bike. And I think Jennifer can give us some, and Brent can give us some color on what a bike means for a recent, a 
arrival. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. If you can, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. yeah. Sorry, we thought we thought Sunday form started at 9:45. So um, I'm sorry <laughs> for joining late. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, like Bill mentioned, um, Brent and I have been working with um, the Zafar Kiel family since about early December. And we got involved with them because the Refugee Services of Texas put a call out for specifically for women volunteers to provide transportation for expectant mothers who needed, um, who needed transportation to their prenatal appointments. And we were lucky enough to get paired up with the Zafar Kiels. Um, Mrs. Zafar Kiel at that point was expecting her 10th child and she was in her third trimester. And, um, you know, most of her appointments um, resulted in at least one follow up. So, you know, one appointment yielded a follow up, yielded a follow up, yielded a follow up. And as women are wont to do um, when they spend a lot of time together, she and I tried the best way we could to get to know each other through a lot of hand gestures and pointing at Google images and the like to um, try to understand each other's circumstances. And in that way, it became obvious to me over the course of a couple of weeks that this large family was really struggling to meet their nutritional needs. And as Brent and I were considering how we could further help this family, we knew that independent transportation um, to a grocery store and the like was part of that solution. So after um, confirming with the father that he was capable of riding a bicycle, and not only that he was capable, but he really enjoys riding a bicycle, um, I reached out to Bill to get him on the list. And Bill said, yes, we've had a very successful December. Um, the timing of this was right before Christmas. And Bill said, yes, we've had a very successful December. Um, our inventory is wiped out. We're taking a much needed Christmas break, but we should have a bicycle available for your father by the second week of January, which was perfect timing as far as I was concerned because the new baby was expected to arrive on January the 8th. So between the time of Christmas and receiving his bicycle and the birth of the new baby, the father asked us very enthusiastically and frequently when his bike was gonna be ready. Um, we would see him multiple times a week and on every visit, he would ask about his bicycle. And we kept saying soon, 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 soon. <laughs> until Bill said, hey, the Zafar Kiel bike is ready. Can you come by at 10 o'clock on Saturday? And I said, yes, we will be there. So um, we arrived at Free Wheels Houston um, six days after the new baby was born. And Mr. Zafar Kiel received um, his bicycle and all of the things necessary to keep himself safe and his bike safe too. So he received a bicycle, he received a lock, um, a light so that he could ride at night, uh, a backpack so that he could put his groceries or whatever items he purchased along the road and carry them on his way home, uh, a bell, an air pump, and little Velcro straps to keep his pant legs out of the, out of the bike mechanisms. Um, so, um, this was a very good day. This is a very, very good day for him. And when we went back to his apartment, um, there was really no question what this bicycle meant to him. It was huge for his, for him. It was huge for his children. And, um, we really came to realize the value of this bicycle, um, over the past couple of weeks. We had envisioned the bike to be used primarily um, for grocery purchases, like I mentioned earlier, and that certainly is the case. Um, Brent and I make visits to this family continuing today about twice a week, 
and we always offer them a car ride to the grocery store and we've never been taken up on our offer. Uh, Mr. Zafar Keel, he says, uh, thank you very much. No, no, no. I can go to the grocery store anytime on my bike. And he says it with a huge smile. Um, so that objective of ours was met with huge success. Um, I would say about eight days after the birth of the baby, we got a phone call from one of the Zafar Keel family friends um, who sometimes translates difficult conversations for us. And the friend explained that um, the mother was having trouble nursing the baby. And they had used all the formula that they had been given by the hospital. And that the father had used his bike that day to search for more formula for the baby. He had taken his bike to three stores that afternoon, but he was unable to find the formula that the hospital provided on his own. And so they were calling for help. They needed, they needed some formula that night. So um, we were very proud to know that he was trying on his own, that he was using the tools that he had available to him to try to, to meet this need, but he just needed you know, a little outside help to find exactly what he was looking for and we were happy to lend a hand. We've also subsequently found out that they have extended family um, here in Houston. Um, they have many nephews and nieces who live nearby. And the nephews um, have gotten involved with a cricket team here in Houston. So um, this bicycle uh, from Free Wheels is also being used very much. Um, so the family can, can participate in recreational activities. Um, Mr. Zafar Keel um, really enjoys playing cricket and he enjoys the social aspect that having a bicycle affords to him. Um, we've subsequently gotten bicycles for two of their children. Um, their five oldest children are girls and the five youngest children are boys. And so Mr. Zafar Keel really enjoys taking his sons out for neighborhood bike rides with him. And um, you can imagine what a relief it is for the mother and the older sisters <laughs> to have some of the boys out of the two bedroom apartment for a couple of hours. This is a big relief for everybody um, from a recreational aspect too. And most recently we have, um, we have organized a library card for Mr. Zafar Keel. And there is a Houston Public Library location um, within two blocks of the Halal Market where they have become accustomed to buying their meat. And so now they not only have transportation to the Halal Market for, and really any grocery store for their food needs, but now they have access to a very conveniently located Houston Public Library branch. Um, where as recently as yesterday, they checked out four DVDs in Hindi, which the family understands. And we've also learned that the Houston Public Library offers free English language classes um, through their computers at their branches. So we're hoping in the weeks ahead to continue to familiarize the Zafar Keel family with their surroundings and to get them um, more and more involved with, um, with um, opportunities that will make it easier for them to find work and to be able to get to school. So um, really, really, I cannot say enough what a delight and what a joy this bicycle has been for this family. And um, to emphasize again, um, what Free Wheels offers is not just a bicycle. It's really um, all of the accoutrements, if you will, and um, the opportunity to access all of the surrounding community. It's just been, it's just been great. Thank you very much, Bill. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Jennifer. I just wanted to follow up with one thing that the point of one of the, the goals of the US Refugee Resettlement Program, which has been around for 40 years in its current form, is self-sufficiency. 
And I think the stories that you just told about Mr. Zachary Keel just show how eager so many of the refugees are for self to achieve self sufficiency. And, and it's just, it's, it's why we started this. And it's, it's very exciting. So uh, does anybody have any questions for Jennifer before we kind of move on to the next? Uh, Inda? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, because having ridden a bike for about oh, close to 40 years here in Houston, and now I'm not allowed to, um, I became very aware how different riding a bike in Houston was from riding it in College Station or the other little schools, towns that I've been in. When you say you determined that, that a member of the family was capable of riding the bike, do you mean physically capable or do you mean like knows what laws there are and how to be safe in Houston? I mean physically capable of riding the bike. Um, and then um, when we went to pick up the bicycle from Free Wheels, we were given advice on specific instructions to give to Mr. Zafar Keel. Things like um, make sure he rides his bicycle in the flow of traffic rather than, you know, counter to the flow of traffic um, and that sort of thing, which we were really looking forward to do. And in fact, on the day of the pickup, Brent put his bicycle on the back of our car so he could sort of tour Mr. Zafar Keel around and show him the rules of the road, so to speak. Um, but at that point, Mr. Zafar Keel explained to us that he had been riding his nephew's bicycle to the grocery store. He was he had been practicing because he was looking forward to getting his own bike. And so he, he said, no, it's not necessary. We don't need to go. You don't need to go riding with me. Um, so um, we didn't we didn't have the opportunity to physically show him, although we did explain certain things to him. And the other thing we explained is that you know there are many dangerous drivers in Houston who are not looking out for bike riders all the time. And we made um, emergency contact cards for him to carry in his backpack and one to put in his pocket. It has his name, his address, and an emergency uh, contact phone number so that if he does you know, get into trouble along the way, um, emergency services know how to get in touch with his family or how to get him back home. Uh, I would like to make a comment to and about Bill Mintz, and I don't want him to feel any embarrassment, but Bill is uh, a wonderful uh, journalist. He, uh, that was his field of study at the University of Texas. Is that right? I don't know. But anyway, yes. I don't know how many of you take the magazine the, of the ELCA, Living Lutheran, and they always have a feature, I'm a Lutheran. And uh, I remember they had Rick Steves and all these people, people knew from, and, and they become a little bit more localized. And I would love to see the powers that be, of which I am probably not one of, uh, feature Bill and the volunteers for Free Wheels in that magazine, Living Lutheran, I'm a Lutheran, because to me, some of the things they've highlighted aren't comparable to the uh, resettlement of refugees and all of the other fringe benefits that Free Wheels gives. So maybe uh, some of us can get together and get this program featured in that national magazine. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Wasn't it featured? Well, well, yeah, but there's in an there's, article. She's you're talking about the I'm a Lutheran feature, yes. which is fairly new the last couple of years. Okay. I'm with you, Bridget. We'll get yeah, y'all get something written. We'll 
we'll nominate Bill <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I it mean, this has been featured. Yes, yeah, just so, yeah. 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 So, you know, this is why we started it at this church the mission of welcoming the stranger. And uh, yeah, that's why we did it. And uh, Jennifer, I wanted to thank you a lot. I mean, you've done so much for that family and for those Afrikeels. It's not that family, for those Afrikeels. And there are thousands of Afghans. I think they're estimating that 6,000 Afghans will resettle in Houston. And the, the resettlement agencies are scrambling. The volunteers are scrambling. Um, and we're hearing from people pretty much every day directly or through case managers at the agencies wanting, uh, you know, people needing, needing bikes, wanting, wanting freedom, wanting to be able to get out. And uh, I thought, did, did we hear from, is David here? No. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Bill Chapman, who is our shop manager, and he's done just a great job of organizing our space and organizing organizing our processes. Do I need to? Do we need well, to switch? it'd be good if Bill came a little okay. closer. I think just yeah. And there's no one stranger than I, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to, I'm a, I'm one of these people that, you know, you wonder what's he doing there kind of thing, because I do not own a bicycle. Um, but uh, Jennifer summed it up very well as to why I like to do this. Um, it also allows me to take you know, a hundred years of experience in, in organizing processes and uh, systems uh, and apply it to what might seem like a fairly simple thing until you, you know, you're standing in the midst of 200 bicycles. And, uh, and so the, we were blessed last year, just uh, this all starts with people donating bikes and, uh, uh, I can say that uh, donations are not an issue for us. Uh, we get bikes from all over the state, uh, from San Antonio. Uh, we've had them, we get them all the time from the Woodlands, from League City and places down in that area. Katy, uh, people come a long way to give us bikes that you, you know, that are in wonderful shape. And ones you go, you drove all the way from San, <laughs> San Antonio to give us that thing. You know, so it's been in the field for 50 years. Uh, but they said, well, you know, maybe a new set of tires and we can make that one go. You know, I'm going, okay. So, um, but uh, bless their hearts. Uh, but they believe in the mission, which is really, again, why I'm here and, uh, and why the volunteers who make this thing really work are here. Uh, every one of them to a person talks about how, what a great, that's why they come. And uh, they come in, you know, 110 degree weather, they come when it's freezing. Uh, and a lot of what we do is outside uh, in some cases. So, um, but the process, uh, after we get the bikes, they, they come in and if you're wondering, you know, what on earth do I have to be a, a bike mechanic to, to volunteer here? Um, and the answer is you do not. Uh, quite, a, quite a bit of the time spent on a bike is before a mechanic ever sees it. And um, so we have, we're blessed to have two uh, sheds or two work lockers, uh, where we, one where we keep the bikes and we, uh, we have them organized. And I just want to say thanks to my wife, Trish, who uh, uh, built a database for us to, because uh, we, we tag every bike we take uh, with all the information and uh, we can follow that bike from entry in the building 
to it being distributed to them. And so we can follow the history of it and we can tell how long it takes to get from here to there. I mean, it's just a, it's a, and it's a nice system. And we, we're appreciative, I'm very appreciative of it because I'm, I'm that kind of guy uh, that, that likes to know that stuff. Um, so, uh, but, uh, so it gets, they come in, we, we put them in the storage. Uh, volunteers uh, are, had been typically on the, one, on the prep side, we call it the preparation side. These are the people, uh, uh, I call them, you know, the first impression people. Uh, they're the ones that when you walk up and look at a bike, you go from over across the room, you go, wow, you know, that looks really nice. Uh, they allow that to happen. Mechanics make them work. You know, the mechanics work on this stuff you can't even see most of the time. Uh, but the preppers take these things that are in the field for 20 years and literally make them look as new again as they can. And, and they put a lot of energy. It's amazing to me how much they're willing to, <laughs> to put into, because I'm fussy about how we clean bikes. And uh, they're wonderful at trying their best to make them clean and presentable. And, and given to people in that condition, we hope that they will be proud enough of them to take care of them when they get them and keep them looking decent for you know whatever they as they pass them in these cases uh, on into their family members. So, uh, but so we have people who clean, we have people who tag, you know, tight because we take uh, bikes apart that we can't use and we'll keep parts. Uh, we get parts donated to us. So we need people to organize parts. We need people with tag tires. We need people to uh, put lights. Uh, we had we had 675 lights sets donated to us and they all need five batteries and so someone has to take these things out of the boxes put them together and so we have stuff as what seems as simple as that although that's not very simple um, uh, but that that easy to all the way through the process where you uh, work on the bikes so um, and that's what happens. We, we prep them over there. We get as much of the stuff done as we can. If it needs a kickstand, we'll put a kickstand on it over there. If it needs a seat, we can put a seat on it. Uh, then, because we're trying, the, our bottleneck is mechanics. Uh, we can't get enough mechanics. Uh, that's where the flow bogs down because it does take time on all these bikes to get them back to you know, good functioning. So, uh, we're looking for those people, but we're also looking to take as much, uh, I will call it, uh, you know, non-value work for them off of them. So we, uh, we find ways to take it and put it with people who don't know how to fix those bikes, but like to learn to do little things on bikes. So it's working out really well. We can see the process coming together. And, uh, and as it, Bill's indicating we're beginning to get some mechanics in. And as soon as we get the mechanics in the flow, this is a this is a pull system when it's working right. And uh, recently it's been working right. So we're pulling out as many as was, had been coming in until this week. <laughs> we're, we just jumped uh, 20 bikes this week uh, through wow. Trek donating and, uh, and a couple others. And it's just been, that's how it comes. It's, it comes in waves. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's been, it's been a blessing for me because, you know, I, I retired last, last mid last year and Trish would be going crazy if I was, <laughs> if I wasn't over there most of the time, I, I go over there a lot uh, because there's always something to do. And it, it gives me the opportunity to do some of that. And during the pandemic, it was wonderful because I could be there by myself and not have to worry about, you know, the whole, that whole thing. So it was really a, a, a release for me for that, but uh, so, but that's that's the the how, and we need people to help us do the how, and uh, and the more you know, uh, the more we can use it on one side, the less you know, you can always you can always help us on the prep side, which is uh, which is stuff that almost all of us can do. Uh, just to give you an indicate, we did do, Bill mentioned uh, in, in January, we did, at thir I think I got this right, 32 volunteers shifts. So uh, there were multiple, some volunteers had multiple shifts. 
but they contributed 460 hours, I believe it was. So um, that's, uh, that's impressive. And that's really helping us move things through. And uh, so we'd like to continue that. And uh, hopefully some folks, uh, you know, out there listening, uh, anybody can come. We will find <laughs> something for you to do. So appreciate it. Uh, Terry Kohler had a, a question. Sure. Uh, open it up about funding. Terry, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Thanks, Beverly. Yeah. Um, I just want, I was curious about the funding for free wheels. So, I mean, you've talked a lot about the donations, which thank goodness are plentiful, but, you know, in terms of getting helmets, new parts, all these other essential things, um, do you guys apply for grants or rely solely on donations, monetary donations, or how does that work? We've yes. had um, a few grants. We have, um, our biggest expense is rent. We have the two units at 6020 Jessamine that Bill mentioned. Uh, one of them's about, I think, 1,080 square feet, and the other one's 1,280 square feet. Um, so that's our that's our biggest expense. We have uh, for the last couple of months we have uh, seen unbelievable in-kind generosity. Um, in early December, I got a call. Um, bike Barn is the, I was the largest bike chain, local bike shop chain in Houston. Oh, excuse me. Was the largest local bike shop chain in Houston. They have 10 stores all over from Clear Lake to uh, College Station and from Katie and Sugarland to a Tuxedo. Um, they were acquired by Trek Bicycle Company, which has got a um, marketing strategy that they want to do exclusive. They want their big dealers to be exclusive, and Bike Barn wasn't. Bike Barn also sold specialized bikes and some other things. So I got a call from this woman at Trek Corporate in Madison, Wisconsin, saying every each store is going to have 15 or 20 boxes of things we don't want. And how many stores do you want? Wow. And I said, one, because Bill's always telling me we don't have space. He always finds it. <laughs> but, he <laughs> but he tells me we don't have Years of working with me. <laughs> uh, so she called me back a couple of days later and said you're taking four so bill and i rented a, i rented a small u-haul we went to one store and came fairly much filled it up went to a second store filled it up <laughs> went back to free wheels unloaded it went to a third store put some more stuff in went to the west u store and filled it up again how many boxes was it? 75. It was 75 boxes. It was countless um, wheels, tires, training wheels, seats, um, things that we can use. We oh, used uh, oh. locks, the locks and lights that they gave us, we used the first week. Uh, 75 helmets, children's helmets. Um, so, so we, we, and then they also in the last, this past week, those 20 bikes that Bill mentioned, they have a bike barn had this trade up program where when a family buys um, a bike for a child and the child outgrows it, bike barn, which generally doesn't, didn't take trade-ins would take those if somebody was going to go buy a more expensive bike. And um, so it's a lot of kids' bikes. We got 20 pretty much beautiful Trek and Specialized bikes. And a lot of them are kids' bikes, which, you know, Jennifer said the family she's working with now has 10 children. 
I read someplace that the average age in Afghanistan is 14. And I read that 35% of the Afghans arriving in this country are 14 and younger. So we've, if we're going to help these families, we're going to have kids funds, which is a whole new kind of another volunteer uh, initiative that we're working on. But we've had, and then on top of that, there was the woman, the woman who gave us 675 light and bell sets. So we're, um, we're not in a position where we don't have to buy things, but between the contributions, the donations that people at Christ the King and other people give us, and these in-kind donations, we do pretty well. But Bill, we how much? Have a place to put them. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you spend a year on rent? Because that you can't get it. Yeah, that's yes. true. Um, it's about twenty thousand dollars a year. And are there grants that would cover rent or? Or do grants tend to cover stuff? Well, yeah, there's grants and there's grants. Mm -hmm. uh, we have asked, I mean, the Christ the King Foundation was absolutely essential in our early days when, when we were just getting started. Uh, we got some grants that we used to encourage other donations. And um, we got a grant from Congregation Emmanuel down the street. Um, so, so, but there are people, members of this congregation who give us money every week or once a month. And, and we are extremely appreciative and have great gratitude for those, for those gifts. Um, we make what we have go a long way. And we have all these bikes and we're gonna get them out. You know, we, we have, we buy tires. Tires have gone up a lot with the trade wars and the supply chain issues. I think tires have pretty much doubled in price in the last couple, three years. Uh, I think you should mention the charity opportunities with Trump. Oh. Yes, there's something else coming up with Trek starting this Friday. They are doing grand openings. They've remod they're remodeling their stores and they're doing grand openings. And the Trek corporate has this change for change initiative where they put basically tip jars at the cash registers of their stores. And um, they've identified three bicycling nonprofits, Free Wheels, Bike Houston, and the Greater Houston Off-Road Biking Association, GORBA. And we will, so we're losing a couple of people, including Bill for choir. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, Bill. Uh, and so uh, if you go by, and, and they're going to give at the end of this grand opening period, which goes from this coming Friday through early March, I think. If you go by one of the Trek stores, and there's one very close to here, uh, and put some money in those jars, at the end, the nonprofit that's got the most money in their tip jars mm -hmm. will get $5,000. The second most will get $3,000 and the Third most will get two thousand dollars. Well, for us, two thousand dollars helps a lot. We pay nine bucks for a helmet, so that's that's uh and locks, helmets and locks are the two things that we're paying for. The helmets we got from Trek are children's helmets, so we still and we get them wholesale. You went to Amazon or Academy, the cheapest helmet you could get is probably. 16 or 18 dollars and we get them for nine bucks uh so so there's there's lots of ways to give to help us um your time and talent is what we really 
are looking for. There are other opportunities. Um, you know, working with the resettlement agencies and the veteran service agencies um, and the and the refugees and veterans themselves to arrange for coming, you know, to come to free wheels. Um, helping with this children's bike initiative. Um, we had a very successful program in the uh, project in the fall where there was a, a young man in the Bo Troop 55, the Boy Scout Troop at St. John the Divine, who was his Eagle Scout project was to help free will. He collected, he and his friend, the other scouts, collected children's bikes, cleaned them up, their dad helped them repair them and they brought them to free wheels. And we, we had a great event in December at YMCA International where we distributed more than 30 bikes, adult and children's bikes. And, and it was, it's a great experience to meet the, like Jennifer's talked about how rewarding it was to meet. It's been to get to know the Sophocle Keel family. And, um, you know, we meet these folks all the time. Our favorite, my favorite thing is to have them come to Free Wheels and get fitted for a bike and meet some people. We, we like to take pictures of our team with, with the recipients. Uh, it's a great experience to be. Terry has a follow-up question. Yes. Um, so you mentioned that uh, a bottleneck was mechanics. And I'm wondering if you, well, you think about maybe approaching Trek to donate some of their mechanics time. Is that a feasible, reasonable idea? <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. They, they, Trek has a program where they pay their, they, they give their employees eight hours of paid time to volunteer a year and um we're working on it i think that's going to happen it's really good for us to have a professional mm -hmm. mechanic uh because they're kind of they i call them the gurus mm -hmm. they they can come and when when people we've we've as we've gotten more volunteer mechanics there's more aggregate knowledge, collective knowledge, and they can help them help each other through a bottom bracket or truing a wheel or or something that they hadn't that they hadn't seen before. Uh, but having the professional, I have to I have to mention uh, it's a fellow Tom Cope who is, uh, he's the chairman, Free Wheels is a separate 501c3 at this point. We're still see ourselves as the ministry of this church, but we're legally organized as the Texas nonprofit corporation, with, which enables us to um, raise money from people like the ExxonMobil Foundation and Trek that are probably opportunities that they may not want to deal with the church. And so, so we've, we've done that. But Tom is the chairman of our nonprofit board. He, he had a career, some sort of IT or tech career and um, got a package and learned how to be a bike mechanic. <laughs> Went to Barnett Bicycle Institute in Colorado Springs and was a master bike tech at, at uh, REI for years. And um, he's quite ill right now. He's got quite advanced cancer and he's not around so much. But he really, the, he was much loved at Free Wheels, is much loved at Free Wheels and still comes when he can and helps us with, uh, and still, helps the mechanics work through issues. Uh, one of the mechanics asked me the other day if we could
to do a class on disc brakes because we're oh, starting yeah. to see disc brakes oh. <laughs> because more and more bikes, even the the low end, what I call the Walmart bikes, are some of them are coming in with with disc brakes. Rim brakes are fading. And uh, so, so that's, uh, you know, people want to learn more. That's why they come. The, uh, one of the reasons why they come is they've, they've worked on their own bikes and they want to learn more. They want to do more. Go ahead, Christian. Yes. Yes. Uh, first, uh, Terry, I just learned recently that you're our new council president. Is that correct? So thank you for your leadership. Yes. Bill, you said there were 90 bikes that went out in last month or something. Yes, uh, December and January. How much, how many approximately are in your inventory today? About 200. Okay. Because we got so many, we got all these bikes. And like I said, we, we had been, we had not been focusing on children's bikes because our, we're at, when we have limited capacity yeah. to repair bikes, we wanted to focus on uh, bikes for adults and teenagers. Yeah. Jennifer has her hand up. So did that answer? Yes. Jennifer, yeah, has. I just wanted to piggyback off of um, what Bill was saying about the collaborative effort between the bike mechanics at the Freewheel shop. I just wanted to say that the same collaborative effort is going on in the refugee community. Um, RST is deliberately trying to place families together in, um, in the same apartment complexes so that they can learn from each other's experiences. And we've seen firsthand um, how you know, the Zafar Kiel family is lending a hand to some of their newer downstairs neighbors and other families in their apartment complex. So the, the benefit that's provided by giving one family a bicycle um, really has a, a trickle down effect to other members of that community. It's a really great thing. It sometimes translates into calls to bill from various Afghans. They yes. That, that their friend got a bike because they gave one too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then after we gave 30 bikes away in December, within 10 days, I had 30 new people on the waiting list. Yeah. So, what is a good motivation for uh, working at Free Will? Is it to serve other people or to learn how to do bikes? Yes. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, if you want to come to serve, you're going to learn something. If you want to come to learn how to serve, learn <laughs> and you're going to serve. I mean, we we are focused. I, I have to tell you, once or twice we've had people who volunteered who wish they could be, were working in a bike shop, and that's not always the best fit because we don't worry about revenue I, I or think, parts. I think from what you've told me, there's a there's a third, and it just may be the sense of community that people keep showing up yeah. and yes. enjoy being together. Yes, there are people who who just really, uh, you know, we've got a, uh, we've got a, it's a fairly small core, but we've got a core. And before the pandemic, we were even you know, some of us were going out and riding. You know, I, I would add to that too that encouraging for new people. Our, our son Zach was super mechanically inclined, but actually technical knowledge didn't know, but people were willing to share all their knowledge with him. It wasn't like, oh kid, you know, let me do it. It was like, okay, we'll teach you how to do it. So it was sort of the teaching yeah. how to fish. And so they were, it's welcoming to people who have an interest as opposed to coming in fully formed can, mechanic. Can I just, for one second, I'm a, Susan has a question, but well, I wanted to- Linda does too. So okay, let me, let me just right follow up <laughs> on that. Really? We will, if you sign up to volunteer at Free Will, we're not going to teach you how to tune up a bike the first week you're there. <laughs> we are going to get you started. And, and it's a, we're going to look for some commitment. I will tell you, we're going to look for, if somebody wants to learn how to fix a bike, 
we're going to look for kind of see their commitment because it can slow us down a little bit and we are in the business of providing transportation but somebody like zach who would come in and work and do what he could and learn that's great that's 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 a perfect wheels volunteer okay okay uh and uh, susan Yes, just a, just a general question, if I may. Uh, are you the only such, is Free Wheels the only such organization in the Houston metro area? Pretty much. I mean, if you, if you Google, where can I donate a bike in Houston? What comes up is 6020 Chesson, which is our address. If you Google, where can I volunteer to repair bikes in Houston? Free Wheels Houston is the first to answer. There are some other organizations that do accept used bikes. Um, the people at Trek have told me that they haven't found them particularly responsive lately, which is why they like dealing with us. Um, and you know, third ward bikes, tour to hood. There's a couple of organizations on the East End. Um, but Houston does not have a deep community biking infrastructure or culture. So that's that's good for us. That's good for us. I mean, people come to drop off bikes and they kind of they're checking us out. We've got some real regular volunteers who came that way. They came to drop off a bike and started asking us a lot of questions. And one of them's come several times a week now. So. Um, it seems that being a bike mechanic may be a good career based on the demand I'm hearing through the conversation. How much does it cost to get trained to be a bike mechanic? And maybe there's some way to underwrite that training in exchange for work? Um, it's a possibility. Uh, Where does one go to become? Well, I mean, oh, that that's the thing is a lot of the bike mechanics, a lot of the people who work at the bike shops are they, when they were teenagers, they started hanging out at bike shops mm -hmm. and learning as much as they could. And uh, that's uh, the way, you know, and that's, there are some who go to Barnett and there's another one up in Oregon. There's only a couple of places that are, that I know of that, that provide these certifications. And, um, and it's a, I think it's kind of cyclical right now. It's like everything else. There's not enough of them. Um, Trek even advertised on Facebook for assemblers. You know, the, the, the guys that, uh, the bikes from Walmart are, there's, they're pretty funny sometimes. They, they're not put together very well. And, uh, so, so, you know, we've thought about that. Um, somebody at the Bilingual Education Institute back in the early days actually thought, could they get some federal money to put together something? And at that point, there wasn't much of a market for it. But now, you know, I don't know how big it is. I don't know that you could do it. And we're, we're you know, at some point, I think, we're going to be able to do things like earn a bike and teaching people more focused, have a more focused training program. We're not there yet. So an observation and then a question. So that's interesting about the bike. I assume it's it's not as far along as like auto mechanics where if you're going to be an auto mechanic for you know Audi, they're going to send you off to Germany to learn their way of doing it. Yes. And because of that, their stuff costs more. And because 
this, that, people think what must be better, and just, it becomes this sort of spiral. The bikes seem like that. You go in the bike store, they're quite expensive. But is the guy putting it together at the truck store like that much better than the guy at the other store? At Walmart, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. So the real question though is, okay, if, if I've got access to, you know, 50 young boys in Scout Troop, one who hear this story and say, let's organize a day and go on. If, practically speaking, what's the largest group you can bring in and really honestly have them be useful to you? Is it one or two or is it five or ten or something? It's like probably that? somewhere between five and ten. Okay. Which yeah. is, you know, we, you know, scouts, like that's a patrol, right? So I can get <laughs> you can get Peter and his buddies to start talking that up. It sounds like and and you know. You know up until the last month, you know, I had this kind of refugee bike project in a box idea mm -hmm. where they would collect them, clean them, and distribute them. Mm -hmm. For the time being, to collect them, because we're getting all these beautiful children's bikes from mm -hmm. Trek, is not a big issue. And we've got another volunteer king who says he's God. Without telling me, more than a year ago, he started posting on his the New Territories Facebook group. Give me your bikes, I'll take them to Free Wheels. Mm -hmm. He's already given us probably 70 or 100 bikes. Yeah. And he says he's got 30 bikes in a neighbor's garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and they're a very they're 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 not of consistent quality, and uh, but you know we're full. I mean, mm -hmm. yesterday when the guy from the Trek West Chase store called me and said, "Are you going to come get these bikes?" and I said, "Yes," I told Bill, and he was about to find out. <laughs> but he, not really. But he. He finds a place for him. He finds a place for him. So what can I, you know, I'll, you know, positive reinforcement. But but they we can still do it, and we can also, I think, including them in the distribution part of it, and maybe we can make that better. We could maybe put together for particularly for the children a like a bike rodeo or something to familiarize them with yeah, that's, with with riding you know and that might be more than one three hour shift but it could be i think it could be pretty rewarding i mean these kids are wonderful you know they're kids but they've been through think about what they've been through you know, and we all saw the pictures from. So, yeah. are we wrapping up? Yeah, we, we need to wrap up here. We're losing some folks online. So folks I, but this is wonderful. Thank you, Bill. Quick. Does anybody have any other questions? And of course, the folks in the room can stay and ask. Can, I, can I do questions? one? Do I have time to do one more prayer? One more prayer. Quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Dear Lord Jesus, your family on earth knew the life of refugees when they fled to Egypt. Bless all who seek refuge on this earth. Meet their needs for safety and for home. Move the hearts of your people to show them welcome. Cause wars to cease and bring justice to the nations that no one will need to flee again. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Bill. Everyone. Thank you, Free Will. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer and Brent there. And hey, maybe a stupid question. Um, you're doing transportation and refugees resettlement stuff are really uh, there's English language 